So John Yahya Graf Jr. was born in San Francisco, California, in a typical Protestant Christian family. Growing up in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, in Arabic, Quranic recitation, and Islamic sciences. John went on to attend Al Azhar University, where he studied in the College of Sharia or Islamic Law. In 2014, through John's work in Dawa in the greater Houston area and deep concern for the great challenges that face many new Muslims, John founded the Ansar Foundation, a nonprofit organization committed to providing educational scholarships for converts. Since 2016, Imam John established My Mu'allim Institute, an online institute teaching the sciences of Sharia from the prestigious of Azhar, in addition to certified Arabic and Quranic courses. In addition to online education, Imam John continues to directly teach numerous Muslim communities in the United States as a lecturer and a motivational speaker. Without further ado, our beloved Sheikh John Graf. Assalamu alaikum and peace be upon you all. Welcome. I'm going to start with the name of God. In the name of God, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim, the most gracious, the most merciful, the all loving, the all kind, who has blessed us all and allowed us to to build bridges and to get to know one another. The, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he used to say uh, that. No one is a tr truly a believer who harms his neighbor, and he used to constantly, constantly encourage his the uh, relations with your neighbor. He said that Gabriel used to constantly insist upon me being good to my neighbor until I thought he was going to inherit from me. So, in the spirit of reaching out to our neighbors, we really appreciate you all coming to our community here. Uh, I myself actually, am, uh, although I teach a class two nights a week. Every other Saturday, the second and fourth Saturday before sunset, we, we have a class that's actually open if you all want to come any time to answer questions about Islam. Uh, as, I, as you heard my introduction, I've been studying Islam for quite some time now, at least since 2000 when I uh, first became Muslim and embraced the faith. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the faith. What's the spirit of Ramadan and why is it that we as Muslims are fasting? Why is it so important to us? Uh, I'm going to start by reading a verse from the Quran, and then I'm going to translate it for you all and tell you a very nice story of a prophet. Maybe some of you have heard about by the name of Moses. <laughs> Or the 
uh, what we call interpre interpretation or tafsir of the Quran is when Moses was fasting, he completed the 30 days. And those of you who know, when you're, when you're not drinking and when you're not eating, the, sometimes the dryness of the mouth gives you a bad taste. And so what he did is he took this tooth stick and he, and he, which in the old days is what they used to brush their teeth with, not something you buy at CVS or Walmart. <laughs> and, and he's brushing his teeth with this tooth stick because he wants his breath to be fresh. He's going to meet Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of the creation and the, the heavens and the earth. And so when he's there, God, God knows that what he's done and he tells him. He says, Oh Moses, it says, I will not speak to you until your mouth goes back to the way it was before. Go back and fast another 10 days. <laughs> so now Moses goes back to fast another 10 days. Even the angels in narrations uh, said that Moses, we used to love the taste of it was coming from your mouth. It was so sweet, that sacrifice you're making. He said, so we used to go to your mouth and take some of it and smell it. It was like sweeter than the sweetest of musk, of uh, cologne or perfume. And you messed it up when you, when you brushed with the tea stick. And so after those, those 40 days are complete, he goes back to meet with his Lord. And of course, the greatest thing that happened at that moment was the revelation given to the Israelites, the, 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 the people, through their prophet, the premier prophet, and deliverer, which was the prophet Moses, peace be upon him. And this remained to be the book of guidance for them all the way up to the time of Jesus, that they referred back to this law and guidance. And similarly, the prophet Muhammad mentions that in one narration he says that Moses was revealed the Torah in the month of Ramadan. Now, of course, this is an Arabic term that even it came short, some short time before the advent of the Prophet Muhammad. We didn't used to call that month Ramadan. But in the lunar calendar, that particular month was the same month that Moses was given the Torah. And he said similar that David, the Prophet David, peace be upon him, was given the Psalms. And similarly, the Prophet uh, Jesus was revealed to him the gospel. And he said also that in the end, the last ten nights of Ramadan was with the the Quran was revealed to him. And, and there's a verse in the Quran that says, Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fi the Quran, that the month of Ramadan is in which the Quran is revealed. So Ramadan has great significance for us as Muslims. Now, one of them, the Prophet Muhammad talks about fasting, because it's, it's something, maybe us growing up in the United States for myself, it wasn't something that my, I, I, I used to go to a Catholic high school, I went to a Protestant uh, middle school. I used to go to many different types of churches, Methodist, Presbyterian. Um, my parents, actually, when they left the, the church that I grew up in, they used to try to go to a different church almost every week to try to, uh, you know, broaden our horizons and look at what there, what there was. And this was in Oklahoma City when I grew up. So fasting wasn't something that I, I, I never saw, I didn't see, although there were people doing it. And the, the uniqueness of this type of worship of course, you all maybe heard of the five pillars. It's actually one of the pillars, meaning it's actually something that it's an obligation. And if, if those of you are familiar, even from the Bible, Jesus said, whenever you fast, this is mentioned in Luke, meaning this was something that was done by the people, the believers of the nations before, the Israelites, that they used to fast. Whenever you fast, don't look somber, as he used to say, as is mentioned in Matthew 6, verse 16. And there was also someone that had some sort of devil or Satan that had possessed him. And he was unable to remove that from him. And the people came to him and said, or the disciples asked him privately, why could you not cast him out? And he said to them, and this is mentioned in Mark uh, 9, 29. He said, this kind can only come forth or cannot come forth except by prayer and fasting. Meaning prayer and fasting is the only thing to do this person any good. And so it's something that was of not just great significance, but it was part of the ways in which we connect ourselves with our Creator. The Prophet Muhammad used to say, uh, peace be upon him, in, in one narration, that this is what we call a hadith qudsi. This is a saying that is actually quoting what God says. That God tells, tells us, he says, As-suyamuri, that fasting out of all the types of worship is something that's uniquely for me. And so I will award it 
myself. Meaning that my, me, myself, or my children, my son, the other day he was playing a flag football. They had him, you know, out there in the heat and he's fasting. Nobody knew he was fasting. Even if I was asked my son if he was fasting, I wouldn't necessarily know he was fasting. How, how would I know that? Maybe he could sneak up and get some water. It's very hot. Now, you know, at the age of puberty, then it becomes an obligation upon somebody. But nevertheless, nobody knows that someone's truly fasting except for God. So it's something that connects us. And in the Quran, there's a verse where Allah says, or Almighty God, He revealed, He says, Oh, you who have believed. Ya ayyuhaladina aman. Kutiba alaykum usiyan. Fasting is prescribed upon you. Kama kutiba alaykum usiyan. Just as it was prescribed on the people, the nations before you. Ma'alukum kattakum. Meaning that in order that you may have God awareness, that you may have God consciousness, that Nobody knows you're fasting but God alone. So you're very aware of that spiritual state that you don't want to break it deep. And even the Prophet Muhammad mentioned about certain types of fasting. You know, because we get hungry, we get thirsty. But he said God is not in need of the person who uh, does call the zur. He speaks in vain matter. Or he, does, and he looks at things that are sinful. Or he speaks in a way that is a sinful way. He says that God has no need that they hold themselves back from food and from drinking. Meaning the only thing that that person is going to get out of fasting is that they're hungry and thirsty. So it's, it's not just an external, a physical thing, but it's a spiritual thing for us. And just to mention to you all just some of the basic beliefs of Islam, just so you all have an understanding about it. And again, you're, you're more than welcome to come. Uh, we're meeting this Saturday our Islam 101 class up in the library here in, in the mosque uh, before sunset, so that'll be about 6, 6.30. Uh, you're more than welcome to come. There's a bunch of brochures and information, but let me just go over just in, in, two, in two minutes, unless, unless somebody else wants to come. Sheikh, don't you want, you're, you're, you're the imam of the community. You're, you're always welcome to come and, and to, to talk, but inshallah. Uh, just want to go over the basic beliefs of Islam. The basic beliefs of uh, the Muslim are six beliefs. Number one is belief in Almighty God, that He is alone and unique without any partners. And then belief in His angels, and belief in His messengers, and belief in the books and the messages that He sent to mankind. And amongst them, of course, are Abraham, the prophet Abraham, uh, and then after Abraham, we have, before Abraham, we have Noah, the prophet Noah, also these stories in Quran, and then we have Moses, as I mentioned, and then after Moses, many prophets sent to the, the to the Israelite people. And then at the at the end, of course, we have Jesus, and then of course Muhammad. So these are things that every Muslim must believe in every single one of these prophets, and in addition to the revelations given to them. And lastly, that the, every Muslim or believer, by the definition of the Prophet Muhammad, when he was asked by the angel Gabriel, who was the same angel who came to him in the month of Ramadan and told him to recite and read. In fact, the Quran, this book we have. The word Qur'an itself means a reading, a recitation. And pretty much without doubt, you could say it's the most read book in the world because Muslims, being almost two billion Muslims on the earth today, in every single one of their prayers, we, we are reading from the Qur'an. In Ramadan, in, in the, the main hall, you'll see this evening, if you're here, you'll see they're going to read the entire part of the Qur'an. So we read the whole Qur'an from cover to cover in Ramadan. And back to the beliefs, the, the last belief is belief in the day of judgment. This is every Muslim has to believe in it, to believe in the last day, the day of accountability, and finally belief in divine decree that everything happens, happens according to God's will, whether it's good or bad. If someone believes in these things, then they would be what we call a Muslim. Now Islam, this is a foreign word. I, I was reading the Bible before I was Muslim, I never saw the word Islam in the Bible. So what does this word mean? How can it be? Because we as Muslims don't believe Muhammad was a, was a new prophet of a new religion. We believe that he called people to surrender to God. Because that's what the word in Arabic, Islam, means. To follow God's will. To give up your will to follow the will of your Creator. And so, he was asked once by the angel Gabriel, Islam. Tell me, define that. What does that Islam mean? He says Islam means, number one, to testify that there is none worthy of worship but Almighty God. Similar to what Jesus said when he was asked what is eternal life, that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. So similarly, we say to believe in the, the oneness of Almighty God and that Muhammad is sent by as a messenger of God and every other prophet before him. Also in the Quran and in the teachings, they were prophets. Also, we have to believe in it. 
And the second is to establish prayer. And the third is to fast. Fasting, of course, in the month of Ramadan, even though the early Muslims used to fast at the same time as the Jews. They used to fast in a certain number of days out of the year until it was an additional order to also fast in Ramadan. And then finally, after that, uh, to uh, give charity and then in the end to make pilgrimage to, to Mecca once in a lifetime for those who have the ability to do so. That's just uh, a gist of Islam. If you want to learn more about it, you can get some pamphlets, you can read. Uh, there's other good websites we can recommend for you all. Uh, may God, you know, unite our hearts in this month, and may God give us the the uh, spiritual steadfastness and and help with building the bridges. Again, I appreciate you all for coming out. Sheikh uh, Mohammed, I would like you to come up just for a moment, if you would introduce yourself to the community. This is our our Imam Sheikh Mohammed. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Peace be unto you all. Uh, it's very hard for an imam to speak right before Maghrib, but uh, I'll try my best. So uh, I'd uh, like to welcome each and every one of you. It's uh, an honor. And we look forward, the whole community looks forward for this day, for this night, for uh, all other faiths to come together on the table for food. It is very symbolic and very spiritual for all of us. I hope you enjoy the same experience with us tonight. Many of you I know and we work together and uh, most of you I'd like to know and uh, work together. And uh, this is uh, the culmination of our uh, spiritual uh, feat at the time of the sunset. That is when a Muslim is happy the most. That's what our Prophet said. For a fasting person, there are two times of happening. The, the full and complete happiness. At the time when they break their fast, they are happy that they fulfilled God's will for God's sake. And if they die, they die while fasting and they go to paradise without any question. And now, 